Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast today. Thank you for letting us be part of your day. And thank you for wanting to be a believer who wants to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter 3, verses 8 and 9 will be our focus. Well, actually, verse 8 really for today. If you can, get your Bible and turn there and also get something on which you can jot some notes. Notes. Along the way, I'll be talking to you about a gospel tract that I want to get into your hand. A gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. If you know Christ is Savior, somebody told you about Christ. Somebody told you you were a sinner and need a Savior. And our job now that we know Christ is to let others know that they too can be saved. God is not a respecter of persons. He offers freely to all his grace and salvation but our job who know Christ is to communicate that message. Gospel tracts are a great way to do that. I'll say more about that here in just a moment. But let me lead into our study time this way. All of us, when we were younger in our years, wondered why in the world time went by so slowly, only to wonder now in our older years, where has all this time gone? When I was 15 years of age, I wanted to get my driver's license, but I had to be 16. Those last six months of my 15th year seemed to crawl by, but now I'm 65. Oh, how the years have just flown by recently. Well, in our passage today, we're going to look at the slowness of years. God, in his patience, lets time seeming to go by forever without his return and without him dealing with openly rebellious sinners. There's a question, as I'm in churches, that I love to ask. It deals with the age bracket in which people came to know Christ as Savior. I know of folk, and so do you, who received Christ before they were 10 years of age. But then we both know folk who received Christ after they were 70 or even 80 years of age. These folk in their 70s and 80s are really grateful for the slowness of God in dealing with time. As a believer, you and I need to agree with God's timetable and we need to be working for him in light of God's timetable. Get your Bible and join me, please. The book of 2 Peter chapter 3. I mentioned a gospel tract a moment ago, and that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a gospel tract, an evangelism tool. A tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This radio ministry is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated, as my announcer said. And our main thrust is to print gospel tracts and give them to people free of charge. Oh, friend, let me send you a free sample pack of our gospel tracks, one each of all of our English tracks. There's over 40 tracks in the packet. Be ready and jot down our contact information that will be given at the end and give us your name and address. We'll send that to you. One of the tracks in the sample packet is this one entitled, Are You in Danger? Are You in Danger? It's a track written by a true story of our founder, Dr. Paul Levine, when he was 12 years of age. He's out in a boat in the middle of the night and there's a lightning storm going on and well it's a great story it's a great story to have with your children for family devotions i use this track when i speak to young people at at camps with 8 9 10 11 year olds it's a great gospel tool for young people are you in danger 
it'll learn here about how to trust God, but also the gospel of Jesus Christ will be explained clearly. Are you in danger? It's a wonderful track. Get it from us, please. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open to 2 Peter 3, verses 8 to 9, say this. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance." 2 Peter chapter 3 is about religious teachers who scoff and ridicule the Bible doctrine on God's judgment of sinners. These kinds of teachers say that all people are going to eventually get to heaven, or at worst, only the worst of the worst will not make it to heaven. They tell their congregations that they're all going to get to heaven. So, they say, while here on earth, just be good and do good to others. That way, when you get to heaven, God will bless you. That's what these false teachers say. That, friend, sounds like good and nice stuff, but it's false teaching. Verses 8 and 9 here of this chapter are the second answer that the Holy Spirit gives to those scoffers that deny that God will judge sinners. The first answer was this, God judged sinners in Noah's day, and he's going to do it again. The second answer here, or the second really objection made by the Holy Spirit to these false teachers is here in verses 8 and 9, and the answer deals with God's patience patience and slowness to judge, and he does so so that more sinners will repent of their sin and receive Christ. Friend, God wants sinners to be saved. If you do not know Christ as Savior, God's heartbeat is for you to be saved. My outline title for verses 1 and 2 of chapter 3 was the word focus. Believers are to focus on God's word. My outline title for verses 3 to 7 was the word first. The word first means above all else. Above all else, we are to know that God does judge sinners. He will do that. Here in verses 8 and 9, my title is faithful. God is faithful to his promise to judge, but he's also faithful to sinners to give them opportunity after opportunity to be saved from the wrath to come. In short, God is faithful to himself and he's faithful to sinners. Years ago, when I was teaching this book of Second Peter in Sunday school when I was pastoring, the author of the Sunday school lessons I used came up with this outline, and I liked it so much I've kept it, and I'm going to use his outline points, one for verse point for verse 8, one point for verse 9. The outline point for verse 8 is this, God's purpose with respect of time. For verse 9, it's God's purpose with respect of to sinners. We'll get to just verse 8 for today. So, first of all, what is God's purpose with respect to time? Verse 8 says again, but beloved, he's writing to Christians here, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Now, friend, you and I view time and we measure time by units of things like hours and days and weeks and years and so on. God does at time use such measuring tools. For instance, he said that the children of Israel, due to their sin, would be in Babylonian captivity for 70 years. So God used time as a measuring tool then, but he did so, but he doesn't do very often that way. When we speak of God... He is eternal. That's why he can be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of you and me all at the same time. But it's also why Jesus could say, before Abraham was, I am. Listen to me. This is a difficult truth, but here it is. God has no past. God has no future. He only has a present. That's what it means to be eternal. He has no past. He has no future. He's only in the present. 
With him, all things are in the here and now. With God, he can be the God of us in 2018. He can be the God with the Apostle Peter as he pens this book, with the Israelites in the Babylonian captivity, with David as he's watching a sheep, with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He can be that all at the same time. Now, let me ask you, does that muddle your peanut butter brain? (laughs) It does mine, but that's our problem. It's not God's problem. God's purpose in all of time is to bring glory to himself. Part of the way, just part of the way, but part of the way he does this is by saving sinners. But saving sinners is only one of the ways God uses to accomplish his ultimate goal of glorifying himself. God's ultimate goal is to be honored and glorified forever. We see that in the book of the Revelation. In heaven, There will be no evangelism, but there sure will be the eternal glorification of God Almighty. Amen? In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2 and verse 7, we are told why God saves sinners. The verse there says, and again, this is Ephesians 2, 7, that purpose statement, that in the ages to come, God might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Now, dear listener friend, God saves sinners so that the Godhead, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit can be glorified. There is a fairly well-known statement that goes like this, missions, and when he speaks of missions, he means not just foreign missions or home missions, but it incorporates our personal evangelism. The saying is this, missions exist because the worship of God does not. Now, for all eternity, believers of all eras are going to worship God and will never exhaust the reasons for giving him worship, giving him glory, giving him honor. Well, that being said, I bring our radio time for today to this solemn thought. If you, if you that are listening do not like to set aside your own schedule to go to church and worship God now, if you don't like to do corporate worship now, what in the world makes you think you're going to want to then be in heaven? Because that's all we're going to be doing. Let me be rather blunt and continue here. If you call yourself a believer in Jesus Christ, a follower of Christ, that Jesus is your Savior, and yet you feel no urging to attend congregational worship times now, then frankly, I wouldn't give a plug nickel for you being a child of God right now. Please don't write me, phone me, email me with your excuses for why you don't go to church. You need to give God your expressions of worship at church. That's the plan of God. Because worship is why God saves sinners. And if you don't like to worship, then I question that you have been born again by the grace and mercy and shed blood of Jesus. That's why he came. Friend, Do you like worship? If you don't, it's because you're probably not born again. Cry out to him for mercy. He will save you in the instant of time you call on him. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.